Mr. Daniel, is it hard to be a poker ambassador? I, it's not hard for me because I'm just being myself mostly. I love the game of poker and I understand that uh, when I was young, when I first started playing poker, poker was seen as like, ooh, that's not a good profession. And I wanted to change that. You know, I wanted to make my mother proud. And I feel like, you know, my mother passed away a few years ago, but she's proud of me and who I become. And I'm proud of the game that I play. And I'm, I love the people. These are not bad people. These are good people, a lot of them. Some of them are bad, but... <laughs> You're known as always smiling uh, guy. When we can see a Daniel Matt? Oh, you'll see me mad. I was mad a lot during this World Series. I threw my headphones and broke them. You know, I'm just human. Everyone has a breaking point, you know, when too many bad beats and you're like, ah, you get upset. But I, um, I, I try to keep it in. You know, part of being a poker player, you have to conceal your emotion. You don't want everyone to know you're upset. So sometimes even if I'm, if I'm upset, I'll go, smile. Uh, you are Canadian with Romanian roots who lives in Las Vegas. Who are you in your heart? Uh, Romanian, Canadian, American? Well, definitely not American. Um, when I watch the Olympics, I feel like I root for Romania, um, but also Canada too. I mean, that's my home country. But I feel when people when I when I'm I always felt like I was Romanian, and I feel like that's where my heritage is. That's where my roots are, is Romania. Uh, when the last time you visited Romania? I visited Romania last year for just a few days. I did some media, but I'm gonna go again this year. I'm gonna go to Budapest, I think, for a visit, and then I'm going to uh, maybe check out Romania again. I really liked it there. I don't know, you feel something special being there? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, when I was in Bucharest recently, I couldn't stop thinking about my father and my mother because the, that's their people, that's where they came from, and it just brings back a lot of good memories, you know, my parents, and it feels like home, it feels more like I'm connected to them. Uh, what do you think about all politics going about for Black Friday? I think it's unfortunate, I think it's... Uh, I'm hoping that you know the issue is addressed. I don't know how long, but I think the government making, you know, people in this country want to play online poker. Now, let me tell you, let me ask you this. In the early 1980s, how many people would have believed if I told you in the future, you're going to have to leave America and go to a free country like Russia so you can play online poker? Who would have believed that, right? You go, no, you can't play in the U.S. Not, 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 not. You can go to Russia because that's a free country. You, no one would have believed that. Well, in different countries, there are different opinions, different official statements about what is poker. So, in your opinion, is it a game of skill or a game of luck? I think anyone who thinks it's a game of luck is really foolish. I mean, this is clearly a game of skill. And if you want me to prove it, we can sit down and I'll play and I'll show you. Okay, because, um, yeah, there is some luck in the game. But the whole thing is it's about making decisions, right? And the better decisions you make, you know, the, the more often you're going to win. It's that simple. Well, can you define what's the best style in nowadays poker? To be honest, more people today play like I've been playing for 10 years, which is a small ball approach, especially in tournaments, where people, you know, they play a lot of hands, but they play them carefully. They try to avoid big pots, continue to keep the pots small, and, you know, only play big pots when they really, really have a big hand. And that's pretty much what you see all the best players doing now. Uh, well, with online so sites now blocking U.S. players, uh, we can hope to see a lot more action in Europe. Uh, will you planning to play in Europe? Maybe we will meet you again in EPT opening in Tallinn? You know what, I'm thinking about maybe going to Tallinn because I'm definitely going to go to Europe more in the fall, but I was going to make a trip to, uh, for a vacation to Budapest and maybe Romania and then right around that I might go to Tallinn. So um, I, I, might, I might go there, but I'm definitely going to be at a lot more European events um, in the fall. So the EPT tour, now we're at the uh, WSOP Las Vegas. Uh, what the main differences between EPT and WSOP events? Well, I mean, the World Series of, of Poker obviously has history. It's been around for 30, 40 years. But the EPT represents sort of the new, young, um, global tour that is the most successful tour in the world right now. All the events have really good numbers. And it's a great tour to attend because you're going to see, if you're an American kid, you know, you're going to see amazingly beautiful countries. You know, you go to Barcelona, you see Spain, you can go to France, you can go to Italy. You know, you see, you see the world. You have an opportunity to expand behind, beside just Las Vegas, you know. And I think that's what the EPT has unique that doesn't, no, one, no one else really has, is the, is the beautiful culture, the European culture that you can see by just playing in the tour. Well, for you, does traveling while playing poker means a lot? Well, I mean... 
I wish I tra- I wish I spent more time enjoying the trips. Usually when I go, I end up talking to people like you in interviews, right, on my off days, so they don't give me a chance to enjoy it. But I found that last year, a couple more times, I was spending time with friends and really getting, ex- you know, experiencing it when I went to Romania and things like that. So I'm going to try to make sure that I really sink, sink in how beautiful and how amazing my life is and that I have the opportunity to see so many different parts of the world. In your eyes, what's the future of online and live poker? Well, online poker is not going to die. I mean, the United States isn't the world, right? They don't make all the decisions for everyone. So it's thriving globally. Like, Poker Stars is doing really well. Um, you know, aside from losing the U.S. customer base, they transferred over. All the U.S. players were paid swiftly. Um, they're running it like a legit company, and I'm very proud to be associated with them. And it seems to be that the numbers are back up. You know, the Sunday Million is still getting, you know, six, 7,000 people. And eventually, poker will get regulated in the U.S. I don't know when that's going to be, but... Um, It's impo- you, it's, not, it's like prohibition. In the United States, many years ago, oh, nobody's going to drink alcohol. Yeah, good luck. That didn't work, and neither will this. How can you imagine poker after 20 years? Well, it, who knows what's going to happen in 20 years. I think what we're going to see in 20 years from now is what we're continuing to see, more global. You know, there's still, you know, the, the boom happened in Australia. There was a boom in Germany, a boom in Brazil. I think we're going to see more people from different parts of the world becoming some of the top players. I think for so long it was an American game, you know, and other people played it, but it was still American. Now, I think in 20 years you're going to see it as way more global and not just uh, U.S.-based. Uh, poker stars are known as supporters of sports. In Canada, they support hockey. In Lithuania, they do support basketball. Uh, is it some marketing move or it's a gift for a community? What do you think? Well, it makes a lot of sense, the connection. You know, um, Poker is a competitive game and so is sports. So the link makes a lot of sense. Ho- the link to hockey, the link to basketball. The type, the type of training that you go through when you're thinking about playing in a poker tournament is, you know, you're trying to outsmart your opponent. When you're playing basketball, you're trying to figure, okay, this guy, he, he, he thinks I'm going to go left, I'm going to go right this time and shoot a hook, and then I'm going to pass. So it's all about out, outsmarting each other. So I think there's interest from people who are interested in sport and poker, th- they make sense. So it makes sense for poker stars to sponsor things like that because, again, the interest of those people will be similar. And what do you think about poker as a sport? Is it possible to play, you know, without money just for a title, let's say, of World Championship. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, obviously, part of the allure of poker is the gambling aspect, the fact that it's for money. But I still think the game is interesting enough where families can get together and just play on a kitchen table and play freeze outs for no money, you know? I mean, I still do that sometimes with some friends. We play for like five bucks. We, who cares? It's not about the money, it's about the fun. So if you are competitive and you want to be better than someone else at it, what money doesn't have anything to do with it? Uh, You know Tony G pretty well. What can you say about the good things and bad things about playing with him at one table? My opinion of Tony G's changed a lot over the years. In the beginning, Tony G was seen he was just he was rude. He did things badly. He wasn't he was not being friendly. He was going over the top in, in ways, and I didn't like that. And we you know we've talked since, and I've seen him change, and he's evolved. And I've seen his nice guy side too. He's a little bit of a jerk sometimes with people, but now I know it's in good fun, and I end up really liking Tony G now. I didn't before, but now I do. I've spent time playing with him, and I like him in the game. He's he is a needler, you know. He makes good TV, but at the heart, he's you know he's a fun-loving guy. Would you prefer to play at one table with Tony? Oh, I always like Tony at the table because he creates action. He's not one of those guys who sits there and you know, only waits for aces. He plays crazy, so then everyone else plays crazy, and it makes for a really good game. One of the last questions, how many girls' bodies did you sign to a date? Well, I did sign someone's lower back and she got it tattooed with my name and it says Kid Poker on it right on her back. And uh, no one else has gotten that tattoo, so she's an original. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it's pretty neat. <laughs>